one, I want to welcome you all out here to this afternoon. Um, and the first thing I want to do is apologize for the size of the uh, committee that's here, but the governor got um, crazy and called a special session. So thank you for all for all you being here. All right, so Mr. Scott Little. I want to emphasize that bonds and overrides are essential to the local school districts and should not be taken off the table until adequacy of school funding is addressed first. Think of it as this, with bonds and override, that's the community coming together to say, we want to do something above and beyond what the state has done. Please do not take away our ability to do it. I'm on the PTO for the first time, and um, I'm finding myself in a very unique situation that we're raising funds for curtains for our NPR room. I'm begging for money uh, to raise money for curtains. Not what I signed up for, but I'm doing it um, because I care passionately about those kids at that school. And I know, uh, as someone who's been through the public education system, that fine arts is something that will keep a student engaged in their education. In 2008, Tucson Unified School District received right around $24.5 million in capital funds. This year, we received $2.5 million, and nothing's gotten cheaper. And I think everybody in the room understands that. And so from 2008 to now, the district has been at a uh, disadvantage of $98 million. You know, it's rough when you have a maintenance department that uh, shops Craigslist and eBay to try to find parts for uh, the mechanical equipment because nobody makes it anymore. But our guys do that, and they do a great job in keeping things going. I'm here on behalf of tens of thousands of parents who are very concerned, as you are, about the issue of teacher retention. We are not asking you to support a movement away from certification. That is not the answer. That is not why teachers are leaving. The Arizona School Personnel Administrators Association reported that 63 teachers throughout the state just up and left the profession. With average teacher salaries in California at 69,000, in Nevada at 55,000, and Oregon at 57, we can't compete and attract and keep teachers. Whenever we make budgetary or educational decisions, they always should have classrooms first. And that's the focus I have seen in your documents and listening to you folks today. And that's why we get so upset when there aren't enough funds to do the things that need to be done on behalf of the very children that are in our classrooms. I also urge you to acknowledge that district schools and state-sponsored charters are different. Fundamentally, school districts are built on the foundation of a community's ownership and identity. Charters are designed to be alternatives to district schools. They're built on the foundation of a particular practice or a belief system that belongs to the owners, and the school itself belongs to the owners. There's a place for both. There are ways to fund both of them adequately, but they are different, and thus the funding system for them probably needs to be different. I come today to speak to you in regards to the funding cuts facing our J-10 and, and CTE programs. This is a voter-initiated funding that has a backdoor cut. I ask you, please support that type of legislation to be stricken and that the J-10 funding be restored so that we can provide our students with the education and the things they need to be successful. The state of Arizona has put forth our, our 301 uh, monies and has been collecting those from taxpayers, uh, but not fully providing those funds to the school districts that they were meant to serve. Uh, it's come to my attention that there's a, a proposal that the 301 monies that are being withheld, rather than being fully given back to uh, the school districts, that only a, a percentage or portion of them will be. And so I would hope that the committee could do what it's able to ensure that 100% of the 301 monies uh, that are collected and designated for education please reach the school sites where they're intended to do so. When I looked at Costumes First, the preliminary framework, I didn't even see ELL students mentioned at all. I understand there's more than 100,000 ELL students in the state of Arizona. And I hope you're considering their needs. We are doing disservice to them already, and we know where we spend our money is where our priorities are, and I truly hope that you will prioritize our ELL learners. Less than 20% of what we need to fund our exceptional education program is provided in the formula. The rest comes out of maintenance and operation dollars. 
And those dollars are es essentially taken from other students to be able to support our exceptional education students. Where we drill down to the minutia of what district schools spent, while on the opposite side, we don't necessarily have that kind of transparency. And I feel that what that does is it creates an environment and a conversation of winners and losers, and it puts our administrators in a really hard position because the conversation always goes administrative pay, administrative pay, administrative pay. What very few Arizonans understand is administrative pay in Arizona is the lowest in the nation. When you pay more, you get a better product. Arizonans are getting an amazing product and not paying for it right now. We have seven straight years of cuts in this state for public education, and that's absolutely criminal. It's criminal to my colleagues. It's criminal to me and my wife, who are both teachers. It's criminal to our daughters. When we invest in our teachers, we invest in our students. We invest in our state. You hear the passion of others for education, and you guys talked about it loud and clear. And we want you to know that it was definitely appreciated and, and definitely heard. I will say, after hearing uh, some comments in Prescott and now in Tucson, um, I regret that we haven't started this earlier in the process. Um, some of the comments um, are, are almost instrumental to some of the things we've been talking about. The comments reiterate what we have been working on, what we are concerned about, and what we need to do to make change happen for the state.